Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hi, Calvary, Amber here. Today we're looking at 1 Peter 3. And he starts off by saying, Wives, be subject to your own husbands. And this is important because I know a lot of women um, struggle with being submissive to husbands. And I just want to clarify that the Bible does not actually say that all women have to be submissive to all men. It is very specific to be submissive to your own husbands. And we do that because we are being obedient to what God has called us to be. And when we surrender our life to Christ and are able to um, be submissive to what Christ has, then we are able to act in obedience, even if we don't like it in our flesh. But I really want to focus on what he says in starting in verse three, do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of your hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in God's sight. So there is nothing wrong in and of itself of braiding your hair or wearing jewelry as I'm doing right now. Um, but the heart of what this is talking about is how um, we should care more about our character and the heart and us reflecting God's character to the world around us than we do with our external appearance. Because we can actually have an idolatry of ourself and care more about what we look like on the outside um, than we do about reflecting God that is supposed to reign over us every area of our life. And it says that we are to have a gentle and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, very precious. And I, know I struggled with this phrase and passage at times, and I know other women have struggled with that phrase also. And it doesn't mean that you can't ever talk or speak, but it has to, uh, it, it's talking about our identity being rooted in Christ. Because if your identity is in Christ and you are completely dependent on Christ and that is where you get your strength from and you can rest in who he has created you to be and you can rest in his goodness and you are getting your strength from him, you are going to have a peace in your life that is unlike anything else. And so this gentle and quiet spirit is really a reflection of being completely dependent on Christ and, and having your identity in him, which is far more valuable than anything else. And it is very precious to God. And so I would just challenge all of you, because men and women can focus on external things rather than our heart. But I know it's especially difficult for women to just reflect on, am I caring more about the external appearance of my body than I do about the heart that is within me, which is really true beauty. And so you can spend some time um, and just going to God and asking him, is that an idol in my life, caring about the external things more than I do about living a life reflecting God's character and honoring him in all that I do? And I just want to touch on one other thing is I have my special guest for the day come. And uh, he talks about how Sarah was obedient to Abraham and called him Lord. And I just want to explain that that was culturally appropriate for Sarah and Abraham. Um, it was a way she could be submissive and honor Abraham by calling him Lord. Because it would be really weird nowadays if I walked around calling Robert Lord. I can't even do it with a straight <laughs> face. Yeah. Um, but there's other ways that I am able to be submissive to Robert and honor Christ in doing that. And yeah. so he's actually going to talk about the last couple of verses for yeah. us. You know, as, uh, as we encounter passages like 1 Peter 3, like Ephesians 5, where God lays out his design for households to operate, that, that wives are to be submissive to husbands. Sometimes it's taken out of context and it's, uh, it's almost weaponized to a sense. But in both sections, there's actually a strong challenge to husbands. And uh, uh, 1 Peter 3 is no exception. When you get to verse 7, he says, likewise husbands. So I want to pause there. The likewise means that for husbands, there's submission required as well. And this whole section, Peter has been challenging followers of Jesus to live in submission to the plan and design that God has for them. And so he says, likewise, husbands, 
we're to be submissive to Christ. We're to be submissive to the, the lifestyle, to the behaviors, the mindset, the behaviors that he's called us to. And he gets very specific. He says, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, so they're heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers are not hindered. And so, uh, guys, if you're watching, if you're married, you're called to be submissive to Christ and how he desires for you to live as a leader of your household, not domineering, but living in an understanding way. Do you understand your wife and the needs that she has? Do you understand, as scripture says, that she is a weaker vessel? Yeah, uh, and, th and just women, don't freak out about that. Just accept that God has created most women to be weaker physically than most men. Like, I am never going to be as strong as Robert physically, and that's okay. It's just talking about we are physically the weaker vessel, yeah. and that's okay. Uh, and, and even if uh, your wife does a lot of CrossFit and you do not, and she might be, uh, you know, uh, working against that tendency, here's the thing in that too. Husbands, part of the, the desire that God has for you is to serve your spouse. You see that in Ephesians 5 as this is uh, explained and, and laid out that we're to love our wife as Christ loved the church, it says. Uh, and, and that is how we live in an understanding way. It's how we live understanding that, that our spouse, our wife is the weaker vessel. So we are to serve and take care of and provide for needs and, and put their needs ahead of our own. And, and the really challenging thing at the end of this, just like I think Ephesians 5 gives a very strong challenge to husbands, 1 Peter 3 does as well. He says at the end, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Husbands, if you're not treating your wife the way God calls you to, your prayers to him might be hindered. He may ignore and not desire to hear and grant the, the requests and the petitions of your prayers if you are not following and living in submission to the, the path that he's called you to as a husband. Yeah, so as we close out, I just want to encourage everyone to have their identity rooted in Christ, um, but especially women. Um, remember that to live with a gentle and quiet spirit because that is very precious to God. Have a good day. See ya.